Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. It's a chilly start out there. Temperatures are near freezing up by the Virginia line, but I'll show you why it feels colder than it is with the wind chill coming up. Students at St. Augustine's University are being asked to move out and go virtual for the end of the semester. Just ahead, the fallout of the school's financial issues. And tonight, the NCAA men's tournament tips off in Dayton, Ohio. And in the tournament's opening game, we'll find out who UNC will play in the first round on Thursday. So tonight's the play-in games to get down to uh, the 64 teams that will be playing in the tournament. Every morning you get to play in here at <laughs> WREL. We have you covered on this Tuesday morning. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. <laughs> yeah, we're the first two in your app or wherever you're watching us this morning. <laughs> Hope you're comfy. It's a chilly first day of spring. Sure is. There. Certainly Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center right now. Freeze warning. And we talked about this yesterday, and of course it is still in effect for a few more hours as our temperatures are coldest by about 7 o'clock in the morning. So Lee County, Moore County in that freeze warning. Uh, we take a live look at North Hills this morning. It is 38 degrees, but the wind is having an effect on the way it feels for you. Our wind is coming out of the northwest at six miles per hour. We'll be gusting 15 to 20 during the day today. We take a look at the temperatures. Temperatures on the left, wind chills on the right. So it feels like 26 in Roxborough. Feels like 30 in South Hill, 31 up in Rocky Mount. Feels like 34 in, in Goldsboro and 30 in Southern Pines. Feels like 31 in Fayetteville. So it's uh, definitely a cold start for us this morning. Our winds are anywhere from uh, about three to nine miles per hour and our temperatures are about uh, 20 to 25 degrees colder than they were this time yesterday. So big change for us and it stays breezy through the afternoon with winds gusting 15 to 20 hour by hour. The forecast stays cool today. We'll be in the 30s up until around 10 a.m. and then only into the upper 50s for highs this afternoon. It will be a nice bright day. It's just going to be a bit crisp for the start of spring. Tomorrow will feel a lot more like spring but then we're transitioning to uh, partly wet weekend. I'll show you the timeline coming up, Brian. 602 Elizabeth, just check with Raleigh 911 and we are looking good throughout Wake County right now with no crashes or other big problems reported. There is a report of some police activity out on 440 westbound right around Six Forks Road, some flashing lights there, seeing a little bit of a slowdown and a reminder with North Carolina's move over law to move over at least one lane when you see those flashing lights. Also quiet in Durham with no crashes showing up at the moment and we're looking fine in both directions of 885. Five. Renee. Brian, thanks. New this morning, WRL has learned students at St. Augustine's University will soon need to move out. The school has plans to shift to remote learning as it deals with a major financial crisis. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live outside the campus this morning. And Kelsey, this is rather abrupt. These students will need to move out in a few weeks. Renee, St. Augustine's uh, University won't have any students living here on campus in just a few weeks. A student tells us that they received a notice that classes will be virtual starting in April and all students must be moved out by April 3rd. This move comes after the school lost its accreditation appeal. The university is also facing financial problems. Last month, WRL reported the IRS filed a $7.9 million lien on the school. That was for unpaid taxes dating back to 2020. University employees say they weren't being paid on time over the last few months. This morning, we're asking about what this transition to remote learning means for the future of the university. St. Aug's interim president Marcus Burgess released a statement last month. That, of course, was before this notice about virtual learning. He says that the school will keep its accreditation and they'll be keeping their doors open. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Durham police are investigating two different shooting scenes on Guest Road. This is video from the WRL breaking news tracker of the two different areas blocked off for the investigation yesterday evening. The first is at a truck rental center where a bullet went through the front door. Then another in the backyard of a house on Guest Road near Berkeley Street. There's no word yet on whether anyone was hurt. WRL is pushing for answers as the city of Raleigh is now facing a $25 million lawsuit over the death of Daryl Williams. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump joined Williams family in announcing the lawsuit against the city, the police department, the police chief, and the officers involved in Williams' death. Raleigh police previously released body camera video from January 2023. Officers used a taser on Williams six times as they tried to take him into custody. Williams shouted to officers as they were using the taser that he had heart problems. He died an hour later. 
Crump says the lawsuit seeks justice for William's family and accountability for police. He was no threat to the Raleigh police officers that night who chased him after they racially profiled him. Williams' autopsy lists the use of a taser as a factor in his death, along with cocaine intoxication and physical exertion. The officers who were involved were not charged after the Wake County DA reviewed the case. Happening today, a plan will be up for approval from Wake County schools to educate families about safe gun storage. The school board will vote on beginning a public awareness campaign on proper gun storage. That would include sending information home with students and a partnership with local law enforcement. Sheriff Willie Rowe and other local law enforcement officials plan to attend this meeting. It gets started 530 this afternoon. Thousands of Wake County Schools employees may soon be getting paid twice as often. The school board will vote tonight on whether 6,300 hourly workers should be paid twice a month instead of monthly. A recent survey of qualifying employees found nearly two-thirds would be, prefer to be paid bi-weekly. The school system says if the change is approved, it could happen sometime in 2025. Duke Energy is planning to build a new substation in Moore County, reducing the risk for a widespread outage like what happened there 15 months ago. The plans come after an attack on two substations in December of 2022 that knocked out power to thousands for five days. The newly planned substation will be built on US 15501 near Carthage. Duke Energy says it will add additional energy capacity and the ability to reroute power in the event of an outage. If everything's approved, Duke Energy says it hopes to have the substation open by early 2026. Preparations are happening this morning in Dayton, Ohio, for the start of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Take a look at the court that is now in place for the first four games, which begin tonight. The first game of the tournament will be Wagner and Howard, followed by Virginia and Colorado State. The winner of the Wagner-Howard game will play UNC Thursday afternoon. NC State fans who are looking to celebrate the team's first ACC basketball title on the men's side since 1987 by trying to get new gear, they will likely get their chance today. You see the red and white shop in Raleigh told WRL yesterday they were still waiting to get in all that specific ACC championship NC State merch. They said simply the Wolfpack wasn't expected to win, so it's taking a bit of time. They're coming, folks. It's, I mean, they're available online. It's just that the, the production had to shift. You know, a lot of that capacity was obviously geared towards Carolina winning the tournament. We pulled it off, and so the, the screen printers had to shift, and we're getting them in. They're available online. There's some other gear headed to dumpsters now. The red and white shop says when they open this morning at 10 a.m., you should be able to shop for that new ACC championship gear. They were expecting a truck to come in last night. And we are just days away from NC State, UNC, Duke, all playing their first round NCAA tournament games. You can track the games with live scoring updates, times, and TV information on the interactive bracket on WRL.com. Just search bracket. 608 right now on your Tuesday. And people in Durham want the city to do more to address elevated lead levels in parks. Why they say the money that's being budgeted toward the problem just isn't enough. And also coming up, the growing industry of college admissions consultants, the cost, the return on this investment, and is it worth it? We'll get you thinking about it. Elizabeth, we're all thinking about spring, but it feels like winter. Yes, it does. <laughs> Tomorrow will feel more like spring, and it is pretty typical for us to be up and down. And today's a down day. Temperatures are cold enough for coats this morning at the bus stop, and it will be chilly as kids are getting off the bus, too. I'll show you when they need their raincoats later in the week coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. We take a look at what's happening out there this morning. It is chilly, so definitely coat weather for the kids headed out to uh, to school this morning. Temperatures are in the low to mid 30s. There's a little bit of a wind chill too. In some places, it feels like upper 20s. We're seeing winds gusting today, anywhere from say 15 to 20 miles per hour. We do have high fire danger. Getting off the bus this afternoon, still chilly. Temperatures will be in the upper 50s, a couple degrees cooler than it was yesterday. But we'll see beautiful sunshine if you're headed out to walk the dogs. It's one of those mornings where you may want to.
think about the gloves. We haven't really had to think about that much lately, but with a wind chill in the upper 20s to low 30s, the gloves may feel good on your hands. Our temperatures will be in the 30s up until around 10 o'clock. And again, sunshine with highs in the upper 50s this afternoon. Brian. 612 Elizabeth, we are watching traffic this morning. Still looking fine on major routes through Wake County. No crashes reported anywhere around Raleigh, Cary, or Apex. In Durham, we're also looking fine on those sensor readings. No trouble showing up on 85 in either direction. And as we take a live look at I-40 out at Fayetteville Road, traffic is getting busier, but still no big delays on 40 eastbound from 15501 out to 885. Renee? Brian, thanks. People in Durham want the city to take more action to address lead and other toxins in five city parks. A report from a Duke researcher found concentrations of lead in parks, including East End and Walltown parks. Since then, Durham Parks and Recreation requested $5 million to clean them up. Some people at last night's city council meeting say that's a start, but more is needed. While the $5 million is an important first step, it, it must be a part of a much larger commitment to a multi-year plan that includes strategic engagement with residents of impacted neighborhoods. A research scientist spoke via Zoom at the meeting. She said there is no safe amount of lead in the human body. She also said once children are exposed to some contaminants, there's not much that can be done to repair the harm. And happening right now in the WREL Live Center, a three alarm fire engulfed a historic church in St. Louis. Take a look at this video. This happened last night. The fire department responded to former St. Augustine Catholic Church. The building is vacant. It's designated as a St. Louis city landmark right now. But according to officials, this is the third fire at this church since 2022. The cause of this fire under investigation this morning. Thanks, Michelle. In just a couple hours, parents in Orange County can register their kids for summer day camp. Campers age 5 to 11 can attend 7 to 9 weeks of day camp in Chapel Hill. Campers age 11 to 14 can choose from a sports camp or arts and crafts camp. Other specialized camps are available as well. Registration begins 830 on Chapel Hill's website. LeBron James is entering the podcast world with the help of a former Duke star. J.J. Reddick co-hosts a new podcast called Mind the Game. The first episode drops today. James and Reddick say they'll talk about all things basketball, and they want it to be real, so they have no corporate partners or sponsors. By now, a lot of college kids have received their college acceptance or rejection letters. Others might be deferred or on a wait list. Tense times lately, many families are putting in extra time and money to increase their children's chances of getting into the university or college of their choice. WRL's Ken Smith joins us now with how this growing industry works and the hefty price tag that comes along with it, Ken. You know, Jeff, when you and I applied to college, it was a whole <laughs> lot simpler, <laughs> right? <time. laughs> right. Well, applying to college these days can be daunting and in some cases overwhelming. That's why many families, many of whom budget for this, are turning to these college admissions consulting firms. Some can cost any, an average between $100 to $200 an hour. That's the low end. NBC News correspondent Morgan Radford sat down with one consultant, Christopher Rim, who charges six figures for his services. Parents are paying you $120,000 a year to work with their child. Yes. So to be clear, when you charge this fee, you're not guaranteeing that the student gets into Harvard. Correct. What we're doing is we're optimizing the students' chances for success. Well, for that kind of money with no guarantees, these consulting sessions can include how to pay for college, what key points should be emphasized in a college essay, and what scholarships are available. Well, coming up on today, starting at 7, more of Morgan Radford's conversation with Christopher Riven. And it's really about the affordability of this. But for a lot of us as parents, we want to make sure our kids are in the best position to succeed. And I think that's what's driving this. Yeah, but driving that price tag up, and that is the $120,000, that's, that's a cost yeah. of a four-year university at a lot of 100%. places yeah. but not all of them cost that much though right right no absolutely especially in states right. we have a great system and meteorologist uh, elizabeth gardner you just went through this as well yes thankfully we are done <laughs> shoot uh, but we did use a college council consultant and it was not that expensive and i felt like it was well worth it mm -hmm. um all the things that are so different now than they were then and uh, really helped to get us on the right track the scheduling was just key you know mm -hmm. here are all the things we have to do and here's when we need to get them done so um thank you to all you college counselors out there uh, yeah.
fortunately, it is all winding down at this point. Uh, Goldsboro looking nice this morning. Apex 2, we have clear skies. It's a little bit chilly out. Uh, Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top the Hill Restaurant and uh, in Fayetteville. Uh, also looking at some chilly temperatures. That's the big story today. But the next big story is definitely the rain at the end of the week. We may see a low that develops along the coast. The big question is how long is it going to stick around? Is it going to be here all the way through the weekend, just sort of wander around, or is it going to zip right out of here? The models are a little bit more uh, on board with pushing it out, but maybe just during the day on Saturday. So we may be able to salvage the second half of the day Saturday, and right now Sunday is looking fairly dry. But by tomorrow, we get the high-resolution short-range models that will give us a lot more detail. The models, the long-range models, you know, they're definitely useful. They can let us see, you know, well out in advance, but uh, it's uh, sort of low uh, low resolution data as it comes in. So you can see it looks like we're going to begin to see some rain late on Friday. It may become heavy overnight, maybe some significant rain with this, maybe up to you know an inch, inch and a half. It's likely to still be with us on Saturday morning, but as we get closer to lunchtime, it starts to quickly pull away as long as that low continues to move up the coast. And then on Sunday, we should be nice and sunny and dry. Here's a look at our potential for rainfall. Our western county is likely to be a half to three quarters of an inch. Our eastern county is maybe an inch to an inch and a half. Again, this being a coastal low, some of that heavier rainfall will be closer to the coast. We take a look at uh, those chances, 50% chance for Friday, 60% chance on Saturday, but it's nearly a 100% chance on Friday night as we see the bulk of that system beginning to move northward across uh, the coast. So for today, first day of spring, definitely cool. Lots of sunshine. Our big story this morning, of course, the cold temperatures. Most everybody seeing the 30s this morning with some freezing temperatures near the Virginia line. A big difference tomorrow. Our wind shifts to southerly. We're going to climb to 72 for tomorrow. It's going to be the nicest day to get outside. But Thursday's not bad either. 63 is close to normal for this time of year. And then we transition to some wetter conditions for Friday into Saturday. Sunday looks nice and bright at 59 degrees. Brian, I feel like we've gotten used to those really warm temperatures yeah. and now we're kind of back to reality. It was kind of a bummer yesterday. It was chilly. It was chilly. Yeah. At least it was a little sunny. Yeah. 619. Let's take a look at traffic. Good news right now. No crashes showing up anywhere in the triangle. I am watching a little bit of a backup building on 64 westbound heading out at Zebulon. Going to watch that, see if there is a crash out there or if that's just the usual congestion we tend to see in the 6 o'clock hour as you head out of Clayton back toward Wendell. But elsewhere, traffic's moving along pretty well. Important heads up for later today in Clayton. Railroad work is going to close that big intersection out at 42 East and 70 Business by the Sheets. That closure starts at 1130 this morning, and it's going to run all afternoon through the evening commute. They are going to have detours set up, and that could be a big mess. Think about alternate routes later today through Clayton. As you're heading out this morning, remember you can listen to us on the radio live at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. Thanks, Brian. Raleigh wants to revitalize more square and it's looking for help from restaurant owners. The uh, perks it's offering for someone to take over the vacant cafe in the park. Richard Simmons wants to clear things up with his fans after a confusing Facebook post that had many of them concerned. The message he was trying to get across coming up in what's trending. And we have your winning lottery numbers on your screen right now from the NC Education Lottery. This is What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Home. Richard Simmons is trying to clear up some confusion after her social media posts spark concern among his fans. Brian Schrader here now with What's Trending, Brian. Uh, Richard Simmons made a Facebook post yesterday saying that he is dying. Thousands of followers shared their well wishes and expressed their sadness. But a few hours later, Simmons made another post clarifying that he was just trying to make a point that life is short, that... We're all dying from the day we're born, and uh, everyone needs to embrace every day that you have. <laughs> okay, but in his post, he also said, please don't be sad. Oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is we all are dying. Every day we live, we are getting closer to our death. He even recommended, hey, if you get a chance, listen to that Tim McGraw song, Live Like You're Dying. <laughs> What is there to be confused about? I think people were right to be concerned. Like, Richard, what is going on? Where are you going with this? <laughs> yeah. Brian, I'm dying. <laughs> Every Me day too. we are Every, dying. Every day. Yeah. Everybody okay. watching this is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a youth hockey player's goal oh, celebration man. is making people smile this morning. He did the worm after scoring during an intermission at last night's Calgary Flames game. Look at him go. Whoa. Social media users praising him for his unusual talent <laughs> and showmanship. 
Yes, love the showmanship. We need him at a Canes game, right? Yeah. We'll have a little storm surge with that <laughs> celebration right there. Now, if an NHL player did that, I can tell you there would be all sorts of backlash of disrespecting the game. But mm. I love it when the kid does it, right? Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. And on that ice, I know he's got the padding there, but. Yeah. I think he had a plan. If I score, mom, watch this. Good form. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, thank you. YouTube star Mr. Beast is launching a new reality competition show on Prime Video that could break records. It's called Beast Games. So the Greenville, North Carolina native says the show will feature a thousand people competing for a $5 million grand prize. And that would break records for most contestants and biggest prize currently held by Squid Game, the challenge on Netflix. Today's the day. Tax pros are just a phone call away. Starting at four this afternoon, you can call Tax Pros on Call and speak to a federally licensed tax professional completely free. All day long, Five on Your Side's Killy Arthur will have reports on tax scams to watch out for, tax credits you may be missing, and how to get free help with your taxes. Call 919-234-5007 for Tax Pros on Call from 4 until 7 this afternoon. Happening today, Wake County school leaders could vote on a plan and proposal to protect students from firearms just ahead, how law enforcement is weighing in on the issue. And it's cold weather this morning. Our temperatures are in the 30s. I'll show you what it will feel like with the wind chill as you step outside. St. Augustine's University is asking students to move out as the university tries to work through a financial crisis. The new plans for classes to go remote starting in April. <laughs> 